Afghanistan's new Taliban government has warned the United States and Europe that attempts to apply pressure with sanctions will undermine global security. Speaking after talks in Doha, the Taliban's foreign minister says a weaker Afghan government will trigger a wave of economic refugees. More than half a million people have already been displaced since the collapse of the previous government. The European Union has been working with the US and others to provide protection to Afghans deemed to be at risk. But as Lucy Hoff reports, the bloc is divided over how many Afghans should be permanently resettled in Europe. It's a military base that is now a sprawling city of tents. Since August, the Ramstein Air Base in Germany has been a temporary home for 35,000 Afghan evacuees. The majority have been flown to the United States for resettlement, but around 10,000 remain stuck here in limbo. I lose my family. Also, I have Kabul Air Base. Uh, I only come by myself. Uh, because it's very difficult to bring in the uh, kids and the uh, women. I lose my all family outside of the Kabul uh, Airbus. It is uh, big uh, unhappy for me. This is by far the largest transit point for Afghan refugees in Europe and is run by the US military. The facility in southwest Germany was designed to host people for a maximum of 10 days for processing and medical checks. But after an outbreak of measles last month, flights out were suspended and for some, a 10-day wait has stretched into weeks. The message we have is we are doing our very best to work with the people who have worked with us in Afghanistan. We are using everything in our power, and as General Olson said, we all here have a real passion because we care. Most of the civilians here have also served in Afghanistan. Myself, I served in Afghanistan, and so everyone here has both a professional and a personal interest in making sure that the Afghans that come get out, get medical care, and get to the United States where they can start fresh. The delays at Ramstein show the complexities of the resettlement process for those fleeing Afghanistan. Europe is looking to better coordinate with the US and other NATO allies to offer protection to those at risk. And this means first that we must offer legal and safe routes globally organized by us, the international community, to those who need protection. And for this to be effective, we must act together on a global level. Europe has already welcomed around 22,000 Afghan citizens and has been urged by the United Nations to accept 40,000 more over the next five years. But that plea has so far failed to win the backing of EU member states. Unlike the US and UK, the bloc has not yet set specific resettlement targets. Migration has been a thorny political issue here in Europe since the crisis of 2015 and 2016, and there are continued signs of division. Some countries, like Germany and France, have said they'll take tens of thousands of Afghan refugees, but others, like Austria and Slovenia, have said they won't accept any voluntary resettlement. There are concerns that setting such targets could encourage people to make the journey to the EU's external border. The focus for now is on providing assistance to Afghanistan and its neighbouring countries like Iran and Pakistan. The EU has increased its humanitarian aid package to 300 million euros to help displaced people. So now part of the discussion in Europe is how can we help Iran and Pakistan host these refugees um, through the delivery of humanitarian assistance, but also development aid, so that already now we start planning for you know, an increase in, in the needs for adding health services, education services. Europe hopes that lessons have been learned from 2015 and that another crisis can be averted through international cooperation. The airlift operation from Kabul has long ended, but the operation to resettle tens of thousands of evacuated Afghans has only just begun. Lucy Hoff, CNA, Brussels.